The following is meant for entertainment and educational purposes. It is not meant to establish a doctor-patient relationship. Please consult your mental health provider for your mental health needs. Hello, welcome to Shea Reek, where we talk about psychiatry and religion with a focus on how to apply it to your life. Today, we'll be talking about the last lecture of the varieties of religious experience by William James, lecture 20, where he makes some concluding remarks. Last time we left off, we asked the question of when people have uh, different perspectives and different uh, backgrounds, and they're all going to answer this issue of religiosity differently, would these differences be fixed if everyone just adopted the science of religion as a religion? So in other words, if the science of religion was the way to pursue an understanding of religion, why don't we do that as religion? William James says no, um, and the reason is because uh, he wants to separate what he has identified as the science of religion, and he doesn't want to make it a religion. And the reason is because religion is something you're supposed to follow with, with, with your personal experiences versus science, which is a completely different thing entirely. It's a useful tool to understand your personal experiences and can help clarify things, but it shouldn't be a, a religion in and of itself. He starts off by saying that, you know, you can acknowledge, you can have a knowledge about something, but it's not the same as uh, experiencing itself. The example is that you can understand alcoholism and understand the causes of alcoholism, but you don't need to become an alcoholic yourself to understand the causes uh, of alcoholism. Science might understand something and, you know, the elements of religion, but understanding it and, uh, uh, and actually believing it are two different things. Someone can understand many things about religion and still be atheist and not believe in anything it says. One who lives a life of religion is better than one who merely knows about it. The science of religion, he says, is not the same thing as living the religion. And if we look at the inner difficulties of the science of religion, we kind of see a point where we have to get up to a theory. And then after that theory, we have to eventually act with faith. And that's something that science doesn't really do. Uh, suppose we have a science of religion that tells us what the facts are. Like these are the facts, and that's what you should believe. But, you know, we'll need to then decide how far, in light of the other sciences, that these beliefs are true. However, this is impossible because right now, this very second, with other sciences, we don't know everything and we don't have all the facts and a lot of things we believe right now might not be true. And, you know, we don't have full understanding of everything, so it's hard to believe that when the science of religion comes up with a series of dogmas, then we should be able to believe them. That's that's not possible. Uh, if the, and the science of, you know, physical sciences like, you know, chemistry and physics and things like that, they don't really help us with the science of religion, the pursuit of understanding uh, religion. Furthermore, if you do a scientific, of, scientific research on religion, you'll find so many silly superstitions that you might conclude that religion is probably false. Um, and, you know, when you look at people, you know, who worked on this in the past, it looked like mumbo jumbo to us uh, today. So in the past, we had beliefs about things, and nowadays we look at it as, oh, that's, that was kind of silly. So the conclusions of science and religion are likely to be both adverse and favorable to the idea that religion is true. And some might say that religion is dead, and it was really just meant to help the species survive. Um, and thus, modern society has outgrown the need for it. And William James abhors this idea of survival of religion um, he kind of goes off on a little bit, a couple of tangents, I feel, uh, about that issue. It's not just for survival, it's something more meaningful, okay? But the place where religion really matters isn't really in the science or the truth of what we're trying to get at. It's in the place where the individual has their own private and personal identity uh, uh, with, uh, their, with the God and they learn their own personal destiny. Religion is very ego-centered, where someone believes in God whether they are, he says, a crude savage or a refined intellect, you know, of many types of all walks, they all believe in God. But they, either way, they recognize a personal call to follow God. And, you know, religious thought is then carried out through that personality. But, and even to this, well, even to this day, people talk about religion on a very personal basis. Science, on the other hand, doesn't care about personal accounts. They care about, um, uh, 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 groups and, and, and bell curves and you know theories constructed without uh, without the concerns of individual things they don't care about the individual um, science can support religion from time to time but it's not really trying to declare the glory of God 
it recognizes God and recognizes universal laws, but it really doesn't care about that personal interaction, and that's what religion really is. That's what James says religion is. It is really, truly that personal interaction. So James criticizes that as long as science goes towards the impersonal, it will always be shallow as it pertains to religion. And, you know, if we only deal with cosmic concepts and generalities, we're dealing only with abstractions in, in reality or, and symbols in reality, right? But as soon as we deal with the private and the personal, we deal with a reality in the most complete sense of the term, in the term that matters the most, most, which is your destiny and your meaning in life. He talks about reality a little bit more, um, but we'll get into that discussion uh, next time. I hope you enjoyed that. Do like and subscribe. Uh, this is very exciting. We're almost done. Uh, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, sign up for my weekly newsletter. I send out emails every week on psychiatry and religion. I realize that email is a great way to go deep into these topics. So if you want more content, check out shayarikpurl.com and subscribe over there. Thanks.